look where we are. We got skeletal muscle. We've got squamous mucosa. So we're on the tongue. Good. In the middle, it looks like skin because it's got reactive change and you've got little nests of, of atypical looking squamous stuff growing down. So when you have it a bad day, you'll call that invasive carcinoma and get a hemiglossectomy specimen. And then you'll see that there's granular cells filling the dermis or the whatever, submucosa. And that's a bad day when that happens. So you want to avoid that. And always, if you end up doing any oral path, if you think it's a squam on the tongue, check in the whatever the equivalent of the dermal papillae are. I don't know. But those little spaces in between the reedy and make sure that there's not granular cells there because granular cell tumor can induce a really brisk overlying reactive epidermal hyperplasia, a pseudoepitheliomas hyperplasia that can mimic carcinoma. And I feel like more often I see them not do that in real life, but when they do, it's a problem. And uh, so just know that. And the cells have abundant granular cytoplasm, round nuclei, and they tend to kind of make a syncytia. They merge with their neighbor. It's hard to see where one cell ends and the other begins. And another, oh, another really helpful thing is this. The way they grow, they grow out into like, and they kind of ooze into the spaces between the dermal collagen. See the collagen bundles are left. It kind of just like that leukemia cutis pattern, although they're not anywhere near as atypical, but they just kind of merge in between the spaces. And they can infiltrate way down even into muscle. They can recur sometimes, but in general, most of them are benign. There are very rare malignant examples. You don't probably need to know that for, for board's purposes. They're really, really rare. And guess what? Perineural, I won't say invasion, but involvement. I don't know if we can see it here. Yeah, there. There's the cells, and here's your nerve. Like 90% of cases have it. Do not be afraid. You see it in congenital nevi because they're of, you know, related to the neuroectodermal stuff. We see that in schwannomas and palisade encapsulated neuromas, and granular cell tumors are nerve sheath tumors. They just have a very funny appearance. So don't be worried when you see uh, perineural involvement by granular cell tumors. It's a very common and totally benign finding. Marked atypia, um, mitotic activity, big, huge nucleoli, then you start to, to get worried, okay? And scattered random atypia, just like for a schwannoma, totally benign and okay, don't worry. And what will these stain with? S100, SOX10, neural markers. They also will stain, what is the granularity of the cytoplasm? Why are they granular? Yeah, lysosomes. And what's the marker for lysosomes? You know it, you just don't realize that you know it. Because then people don't teach it this way, but they should. CD68, people teach it as a histiocyte marker, but it's not, it's a lysosome marker. Histiocytes have lysosomes and they stain, but it stains a bunch of other stuff. It's not a specific histiocyte marker. If it's negative for 68, it's probably not a histiocyte. But if it's positive, it doesn't mean anything. It could be a lot of things. And these are loaded with lysosomes, so they're blazing with 68. I mean, usually you don't need much. You can do a, just a, a S100 is enough to confirm it. I have one time seen an angiosarcoma that looked essentially identical, although it had a lot of mitoses. We're, uh, from a colleague in Brazil that I think Geronimo and we know. We haven't written it up yet, but we're going to. We presented it at a meeting, but the president's still, still thinking, thinking about the paper. Granular cell tumor. 